Recently, a poll was conducted on JavaScript Daily Twitter, and the question was, do you know what Preact is? Nearly 4,000 people replied with the following results. 10% already use Preact, and 46% have heard about the library. So it rings a bell for 56% of all respondents. The rest have either seen mentions of it without going into details, or have no idea about Preact at all. Meanwhile, an article published on the Uber blog tells the story of how a mobile version of their website, m.uber.com, was created, which is, in fact, a progressive web application powered by Preact and Redux. It's a story of building a small and fast web application while keeping the entire functionality for getting an Uber ride. In the end, the whole app fit into 50 kilobytes after gzip. I wonder if they are using Preact Compat compatibility layer and standard React Redux bindings. Or maybe instead of a compatibility layer, they work with a pure Preact and Preact Redux binding. Though I didn't manage to find the word Compat anywhere in the minified code on their site. By the way, the promo site for the latest Transformers movie is also built on Preact. This week I finally had time to watch a talk called Preact, Into the Void Zero, that Jason Miller, the author of the library, gave at JSConf EU 2017. It is just 27 minutes long with good information density and no rambling. A superb talk indeed. Jason showed how JSX is translated into common function calls, which result in simple JavaScript objects, describing the new virtual DOM structure. He also demonstrated how to write a basic renderer that creates a real DOM based on a virtual one, and gave a thorough explanation of the diff algorithm. He wrapped up with a speech revealing some performance optimization techniques for working with DOM and mentioned a few profiling tools he used, Chrome DevTools, ESBench.com, and Benchmark.js. Definitely a must-watch. Inspired by this video, I found some time to watch the Preact course at Egghead.io that I mentioned a few episodes ago. However, it turned out to be too basic. Essentially, it's an introduction to React with a couple of examples specific to Preact. It once again goes over what functional, stateless, and stateful components are, and how to query data in component did mount, with a few basic router and Redux examples. If you are a confident React user who wants to get to know Preact, a better choice would be to take 15 minutes and skim through the documentation on the Preact website, instead of spending a whole hour on this video course. Or take it even further and watch the talk Preact Into the Void Zero. It gets pretty hardcore. Moving on, I've decided to try out Preact CLI, a console tool for launching a Preact project quickly, and not just any Preact project, but a full-fledged progressive web app. Lighthouse rates its performance at 100 points out of 100. Its features include fully automatic code splitting for routes, service workers in offline caching, server-side rendering, CSS modules, LESS, SAS, Stylus, and Auto Prefixer. The only thing missing is post CSS, although it is available via a plugin. There are also debug helpers and hot module replacement. Judging by the description, Preact CLI looks way cooler than the Create React app. It even comes with a plugin system. As soon as the global Preact CLI package was installed, I ran Preact and Create My App and waited for all the dependencies to get installed under the hood. It took well over 10 minutes, and the terminal froze in the end. I'd blame the terminal application. In my case, it was Hyper, which was written in JavaScript on top of Electron. Actually, I have quite a few reasons to complain about Hyper, so I made another attempt in iTerm2. It took a while again, but this time it worked out, and 136 megabytes of dependencies were installed. The demo project is rather straightforward. Three routes broken down into tidy components. I ran a production build with a preact build command and got a separate JS file for each route, plus a 5 kilobytes polyfills.js containing polyfills for fetch and promise, then a 19 kilobyte bundle.js and a 4 kilobyte sw.js. Some service worker stuff, I think. Here I'm referring to the file size on the hard drive before gzip compression. I haven't yet built a proper project with preact CLI, but I'm really looking forward to it. To me, the most intriguing part is TypeScript support. There is a plugin for TypeScript support, but I have not tried it yet. A milestone for version 2.0 has already been created on GitHub. There are plenty of commits and a lot of action every single day. Now a question in the spirit of JavaScript fatigue. 
What is the best choice for creating a sleek, offline-first PWA site? Preact, CLI, or Gatsby, which I told you about in the previous episode. I feel like Gatsby is a higher-level construct on top of React, and it has more conventions, which eventually helps spend less time on development, if you figure out how to use it, of course. On the other hand, Preact CLI is a lower-level solution closer to the code, so it might be a little more flexible. But I'm just speculating for now. Feel free to share your experience in the comments if you have used Preact CLI or Gatsby. Code with Preact CLI and Prosper.